grace and peace be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. What a blessing it is when we get to come into God's house with thanksgiving and praise. Whether that house is here or in your personal home, God is with us and we give thanks. May we join in our voices together as we sing our opening song, Easter people raise your voices. sanctuaries made of human hand, but in our hearts, wherever and however we are. In God, we live and move and have spirit, and so as God's children, we come to worship. May God be made known to us, and may God be seen through us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we share together in our opening hymn, Abide with me. Steve. 
know that we are still in community with one another. Though we are separated, the distance that separates us remains to be holy ground. That our sanctuary space has become broader and deeper over this time of separation. How great and wonderful and marvelous it is to know that God is with us in spite of this separation. That within our homes we have created sanctuary holy spaces for God to abide with us, to be present with us, to rejoice alongside us. Also to hear the tears of sadness, anxiousness, stress, concern. Our God is present and real in the midst of all of us. Even though we have been separated one from another, we know that that holy space that separates us is filled with the prayer language and depth of our hearts as we cry out to God, both in joy as well as in concern. And so certainly this day we lift before our God the heavy concerns of our hearts. For those who are in the continuing process of healing and concerns over health matters, for those who are in the midst of cancer treatments and ongoing health issues, also certainly we lift those who mourn the loss of loved ones. For the McFarland family and the loss of Charlotte, we pray for God's spirit of resurrection to be upon each and every one of them. We know that this, like many other families, are trying to make sense of this new way of life. For we who come and worship wherever and however we are, we all try to make sense of this new way of life. Certainly, we pray for an ongoing spirit of concern and presence for each of us. Because just as the world is beginning to transition from red to green and yellow and every color in between, there are many opportunities for us to want to do more and go places and do and do and do. But we pray for God's hedge of protection to be around each and every one of us. And certainly in the difficult moments when we continue to be in this place of not being present in the physical confines of this sanctuary here at Good Shepherd. And yet we know that God is bigger than the four walls, the floor, and the ceiling of this place. Our God is bigger and better and more grace-filled no matter where we are. And so may worship be with us wherever and however we are. I never thought that I would use those words as much as I have. And yet those are the Bibles. God is with us wherever and however we are. May we turn now in a spirit of prayer to our God. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you, wherever and however we are, needing you more than we've ever needed you before. We need your spirit of resurrection and concern. We need your healing touch and your power and your presence and your liveliness. We need to be awakened in the power of the Holy Spirit that you sweep over us. Lord, just as we often do in our worship, we invoke the Spirit and presence of the Holy Spirit where we are. How powerful it is to know that we are invoking the Spirit's presence today, wherever and however we are. That you fill our homes, you fill our workplaces, you fill our cars, you fill our families. You fill our very lives so that they become the covenantal house, the sanctuary space, the living presence that you awake us, that you challenge us, that you stretch us, that you grow us, that 
be placed onto our very tongues the need for whatever it is for us to confess and place before you. Every single one of us, wherever and however we are, are carrying baggage. The sins and the temptations, the struggles, the separating points. Lord, we drop it. We drop it all before you today. We hear your still small voice calling out to us. Sinner, come home. And so may we do so. May we do so as the prodigal children that we are, that we run to you. We run to you. And what we find is that just as we begin the journey back to you, you're already running on us. And you outmatch us. You outgive us. And you forgive us. Over and over and over. Lord, when we come close to you, we are richly blessed and changed from the inside out. Lord, we need you now. We need your healing touch as the great physician that offers that hedge of protection over those who are struggling with illness and disease and in the midst of ongoing health concerns for those who are on the front line of working as essential persons trying to offer your hands because they are just that. They are instruments in your hands. And you use them. And for us in our own weakness, Lord, not just physical weakness, but spiritual and emotional weakness. Lord, we need you to touch us with the healing balm. We need the Holy Spirit's presence as the advocate, the friend, the journeyman that abides with us, goes with us, challenges us, is real with us. We need you to be real for us more than we've ever needed before. And so, Lord, touch our lips, touch our ears, touch our eyes, touch our hearts, touch our hands, touch our feet, that we might grow in every way possible and live for you in ways that we have yet to live for you. Let this be the day that begins a spirit of revival for every single one of us. And when we fail, may we start it all over again in the moments that follow. For you, abide with us. Now may we abide with you. Hear now the words of our hearts and the meditations of all that we do and say as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we give thanks to our God for the tithes, offerings, and gifts that come before us. We thank you for your ongoing presence and spirit of growth among us as we continue to grow this church in whatever way is possible. May we join together in singing our God song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
increase in the ways that they are sent out, and may you continue to bless us. For wherever and however we go, you are with us. And so, God, may you fill our hearts today, that we may each and every one know that the best gift that we have is to give and serve you now and always. In the precious and holy name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. If you will join with me now as we sing our next hymn, Trust and Obey. see footprints 
in the woods, okay, on, on like a trail. How about at the beach? Yeah. Um, have you ever maybe walked in the house with some dirt on your feet and maybe left some footprints across the floor? You think? Yeah. Does that sometimes happen? Yeah. Or maybe when the carpet is freshly vacuumed and it has that real nice sheen and you walk across it and you can see the footprints in the carpet. Yeah. So what do you think the footprints tell us? What do you think the footprint tells us? That someone has been there. Footprints can tell you that someone has been there. So what do you think God's footprints could be in our lives? How do, we, how do you think we might know that God has been there before us? What do you think? Do we ever tell you about God? Yeah. Do we ever sing songs about God? Do we ever teach you to pray? Do we ever talk through Bible stories? Do we ever talk through the ways that we can be better as friends and neighbors and kids and parents? Yeah. All of those things might be ways that we can see the footprints of God that go on ahead of us. And we also know that God takes care of us when we get those bumps and bruises and road rash, when we wreck our bicycle, right? And have alleys on our knees. Yeah. God is always with us, taking care of us, isn't he? Yep. We might not always see the footprints like we can see on that towel or on our carpet, but we know that God goes ahead of us, taking care of us. Will you pray with me this morning? Lord, we thank you for this day and for your love among us. Keep us safe now and always, and may your footprints go ahead of us. That your watch, your care, your concern, it's always present and real for us. And so, Lord, be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Love you. Our gospel reading for the day comes from the 14th chapter of John. Verses 15 through 21. May we hear now the words of God that come to us. John 14, verses 15 through 21, as I read from the New Revised Standard Version. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. To be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you. And he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I and coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding and the warming of all of our hearts as we come to full knowledge of what God has in store for us. From this, the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
You know, as I've taken some time reflecting on this gospel reading for today, I heard a word that I've probably heard a thousand times. I heard a word in this gospel reading that I've always known was there. But it was more real for me as I reflected and prepared for today's message. I think it was a word that has become even more real for me in the midst of this process of us being separated one from another and yet still connected by God's grace and God's presence. That word comes out of John 14, verse 17. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Abide. Abides with you. That word abides. You know, I, as that word struck with me, I wonder why it's never been put into a marriage vow. Because the depth of meaning of that abiding, it's so rich. Because what our God says is, I will be with you. I will know you. I will be in you. It's the kind of richness that says to us that God wants to relate to us in such a way that wherever and however we go, God will be with us. God will be married to us so richly that nothing will separate us. I don't often dig out or do word studies as part of my sermon. But that word abide struck me so deeply that I couldn't help but dig up all of the different meanings that bubble to the surface out of that one simple word, abide. One of the meanings is this, to bear patiently. Also, another word would be to tolerate. How does our God Bear patiently with us. How does our God tolerate us? Because let me tell you, friends, maybe confession is good for the soul. Maybe I'm the only one who will speak up in this moment. I have a feeling that I might not always be easy to tolerate. There might be certain things about me that can grate on my wife. My children, my brother, my mother, my friends, the people I'm around. Have you ever sat back and maybe asked yourself, what are the things that God needs to bear patiently with me about? Notice it doesn't necessarily say, what are the things that I sin regularly on? What are the things that I need to just absolutely drop because they separate me from God? This is a lesser degree. What are the things that God has to tolerate about me? What are the things? 
things that other people have to tolerate in order to put up with him? Is there some of that that we can come closer to God and say, I know you have to bear patiently with me on this one. Can you help me so that we can be better together? I know for a fact one of the things that I have found myself more readily doing is when I tell something, retell a story to Anne, I find myself having to share every minute detail. And I can see her doing this. Because she's ready for me to just get to the end of whatever it is that I'm trying to tell her. She doesn't need to know what color a person's shoes were. She doesn't need to know what temperature it was. She doesn't need to know how many things I saw. She bears patiently for the most part. And I was trying to get to the details of those aspects of life. It's not a deal breaker. It's not a relationship ender. We tolerate one another. We bear patiently with one another. But you know, too often in our own society, we get to the point where everything is disposable. And we don't want to tolerate anything. We want to pitch it to the side. We want to quit thinking about it. We can't tolerate it anymore. How many of us, in this season of separation, have found ourselves saying, I can't abide with this anymore. I cannot bear patiently with this anymore. I cannot tolerate this anymore. Maybe it's that mask that is over your face that is causing your glasses to fall. Maybe it's the smell of your own breath that reverberates back into your own nose as you're breathing. We can't bear with it patiently anymore. And so we want to pitch it to the side and run right back into life. Yet society, governance, maybe even our God, is telling us that we must tolerate. We must bear patiently with this. It's not easy. But how many are the things that our God tolerates about us? They're not deal breakers. They don't separate us one from another or one from God. And yet, in order to abide, we have to bear patiently. In the same vein, the second definition of abide is to endure without yielding, to withstand. Isn't that what we are expected to do? I will stand firm in the foundation that no matter what comes, I will abide. Withstanding. Stand with. Our God remains faithful to us wherever and however we are. He abides with us. He withstands. He stands with us. So that we can endure without yielding. That as everything is crashing around us, we can stand firm. That as the onslaught of difficulties can be overwhelming, we withstand it. Our God abides in such a way that we endure without yielding. 
Because the foundation that we are built on is not our own. Remember that scripture that says to us, if you build your foundation on sinking sand, it will just be that. Sinking sand that washes away. But if we build our foundation of faith, our roots in God, we can withstand anything. That when we are asked to take up these moments of worship where we sit in the confines of our own homes rather than in the sanctuary space of our church, our God says, I will stand with you. Wherever you go, I will abide with you. Those definitions continue to flow for us because yet another says to wait for. Abiding means that we have the willingness to wait for something. We await something greater. We await an outcome. We await the end result. I think that's the reason why Anne draws patiently with me as I have those long and drawn out sordid detailed stories. Because she knows at the end she's awaiting for something. Sometimes the problem is when we fill in all of the details, the story has lost its fervor and its interest. If we are perpetually amazed and waiting for that end result, then we won't lose interest. If we await the coming of our God, the healing of our hearts, the forgiveness of our sin-sick soul, then the journey is worth the waiting. Too often, I think we want to have that anticipation of immediate results. Because we live culturally and societally into a presence where everything has to be instantaneous satisfaction and instantaneous gratification. And we're in a season of waiting. Just as quickly as this disease came, we wanted it to be over like that. Maybe it's a little mind-numbing and mind-blowing for us whenever we hear, what do you mean we can't go back to that? Normal understanding. What do you mean we can't go there and do that? And what do you mean you have no idea how, how long we might exist in this time and space and color coding? I don't know if I can wait that long. And yet, the season of resurrection that stretched. As the disciples waited, their understanding and faithful journey with Jesus Christ changed everything as he was taken from them and they waited. And yet when our God revealed, it changed everything. And there was a brighter, newer beginning and a church was established. Are we waiting for God's revival in the midst of who we are, where we are? Because that, I think, is exactly what our God is wanting to do. He wants us to await that new beginning. He doesn't want us to necessarily fast forward to the very end of the story, because when we fast forward to the very end of the story, we miss all of the details in between. Not all of those details in between are for you or for me, but they might be for your neighbor or for the stranger across the road. The awaiting for our God is where we abide. Yet another definition of the word abide is to accept without 
objection. To accept. I don't know if any of us have really accepted any of this. In fact, maybe some of us have, have used those very words. Get behind me, Satan. I rebuke you. Get away from me. And yet, we accept without objection. Because if our faith is such that we hear the words with freshness that God abides with you, then the acceptance is that no matter where we go, however we are, wherever we are, our God is with us. In fact, the scripture says he's in us. Ann and I have had the difficult news from close family friends of ours that our friend Joe, who had a heart condition caused by a virus, not this virus, but one years ago, and his heart was attacked. And for years he has had to live with a pacemaker. And the ongoing changes of accepting that routine in his life. And having ongoing checkups of that pacemaker so that he could accept life as it was. And Joe and his entire family are strong. Not only physically, but they are spiritually strong. And right there in the midst of all of this that's ongoing with this virus, this COVID-19, this pandemic, Joe hasn't been feeling well. And he went to the doctor only to hear the news that everything that was going on with his heart, it's not going to get better. And so this week, his name was put on a heart transplant list. And the news that you hear that your life will be irrevocably changed unless you get this transplant. But then to hear the words that follow. Your blood type is the rarest so that your list of waiting is even shorter than many other people. To hear the words as the doctors say, you are the best candidate for this kind of a procedure because you are so strong and you are so healthy and you are so spiritually in touch with where you need to be. And the message that was sent out from Joe's wife, we have accepted this. We've made peace with this. We know that God's got this. Wherever and however. God's Godness. God abides with you. God continues to define that abiding with us as it says this. We remain stable, fixed, Mount. Secure. Stable. Are we fixed in God? Because He's fixed in us. 
To know that whatever befalls us, whatever confronts us, whatever tries to overwhelm us, our God abides with you. Notice when you listen to that one more time, to remain stable, fixed, secure, mounted, fortified. And when you read the definition of that verse, God abides with you. It doesn't say we abide with God. It says God abides with you. God builds up a foundation in you, is fixed in you, is prepared to secure you, to fortify you. This is no longer a passive. God is right there in the midst of you. Which leads us to the second part of this. Because that abiding says it will continue along the journey. It will sojourn with you. So that we can be modeled. I know that whenever we get asked to go someplace, that we may not want to go. How wonderful and blessed it is to know that there's somebody who's right there alongside us. For we as parents of little children, sometimes all it takes is that hand that reaches out. Because it's easier to go wherever it is that we're asked to go if we have that hand that guides us. Some of the most blessed moments that I have with my wife and my children have nothing to do with words that are spoken, but it has everything to do with words that are unspoken. That all I have to do is reach my hand out to Anne. And her hand intertwines with mine. And our hands fit together perfectly. Our hands fit together like nobody else's hands fit together. And we have our own little secret way that we hold our hands. And it's just that. It is significant to us. And our God does the same thing. Our God knows the feel, the touch, the form of our very being. And he sojourns with us. When I was in college, the religious group that I was a part of at Allegheny College was called Sojourners. And our motto or our byline was that we were more than wanderers. I think sometimes for us in our journey of faith, we feel like we're wandering, lost. Certainly as you look back in Scripture, as the Israelites were released from captivity, and their 40 years of wandering felt like they were on a pointless journey. And yet, their God sojourned with them, providing manna and water, guidance and direction, presence and healing, living and loving, grace and mercy every day. You and I, We're journeying with God. But the power in every single aspect of this simple word, abide, is 
is that it's about God, not us. Tolerating, withstanding, awaiting, accepting, being fixed, sojourning, model, submitted. Every bit of that, when we think, is this about us? Yeah, it's about us, but it's actually about what God is doing for us, with us, and in us. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, the Holy Spirit. To be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. And yet you. You know him. Because he abides with you. And he will be in you. I have faith that wherever and however we go, our God abides with you. May you open your eyes, your ears, your hearts, and know that he is in you. And that's all the difference that we need to know. Let us pray. God, we abide with you today because the most powerful thing we have to say is that you abide with us. You are in us. And so, Lord, take us as we are and make us better than we started out. Create in us a new heart, O God. Be born afresh and anew for us today, O God, as we abide with you and you abide with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. If you are able, then may we join together in singing our final hymn, and may this be a hymn of testimony for us, a new beginning, because he lives. <laughs>
and then as death gives way to victory, I'll play the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. Because he lives. <coughs> this child, you, child, can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. May the living presence of our God be with you now and always. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and may God be alive, well, and present with you now and always. Amen. As he moves, I can face tomorrow, because he lives. All fear is gone, because...